Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. And my woes continue ladies and gentlemen, many of you will have noticed the another gap in programming. My internet connection is still giving me jip, it's up and down like a whore's drawers at the moment so trying to get replays, search for replays, get them downloaded and uh, casted and uploaded is just... Uh, it's a nightmare uh, short of it. And also it's happening the week before I go away on holiday for a fortnight as well. It was the one week when I really wanted to hit it hard and get lots of replays out for you guys. I haven't been able to do so but hey ho that's life. We all got born and now we have to deal with it. Um, what is the game I've got for you guys today? Well, it's a balanced testing mod, and I'm not sure how many of these I've covered in my previous casts. For those of you who have uh, joined the community recently and haven't, or I say haven't joined the community recently and don't know or don't understand much about balanced testing mod, well, what is balanced testing mod? It allows us to evolve the game, basically. Uh, the forums get a uh, great deal of discussion about balance, and uh, as the game changes and evolves, the best ideas get put into a balanced testing mod and then we will get about a month or so to play with it and uh, we will get to then vote on the changes and see how they play and, and uh, then it makes it into the final cut of the FAF mod. So it's an excellent, nice, lovely, gorgeous, democratic way to uh, do stuff and uh, keeps the game fresh, entertaining and moving forward in a positive direction as well. Um, so there you go. What is the major features though of 3626? Well, long and short of it is, it's a pretty large buff to Aeon. It's been felt that with the last few patches, Aeon have slipped behind, especially with the or the introduction, I should say, of NG Mod. The ability to pump out Percivals at, and Bricks at high rates have uh, kind of pushed, I guess, Seraphim as well towards uh, the back end of the pile. Certainly in the uh, late game, at any rate but uh, it's been felt that Aeon is pretty flat across the board uh, so they're trying to rectify that and what are they trying to do well they're shifting the emphasis onto the sniper bots they're making them cheaper and uh, easier to get hold of and that kind of thing and uh, stopping the Aeon one from having to deploy which is nice um, so you've got the armored assault bots for Cybrin and UEF with the punching power and Seraphim and Aeon are going to have the range counter to be able to pick them off at range so it's a nice little uh, aspect of factional diversity coming back into the game which is always cool and good to see other things as well of course the obsidian's getting a, an awesome aoe buff it's getting an hp buff uh it's well it's the hp is moving from the shield kind of onto the structure uh but it's getting a regen buff on the shield as well so i mean it really will be the best t2 unit on the field i think i always loved it best anyway but now it's super cool also the blaze is getting a nice uh, muzzle velocity increase and uh, movement speed increase as well so that's a uh, a little snifter of uh, what's happening in the test mod i can't remember all the changes but that gives you a flavor anyway today's game is going to take place on twin rivers so let's head on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on and taking a look at the players and their locations up here at the top right in the red corner going uef it's bc blackheart and he's opening first land second air and then over here on the left hand side We've got the quintessential Luzun in his customary teal, this time going Aeon, also opening first land, second air. Now, uh, I say this time, of course, Luzun, typically, atypically, a Seraphim player. You see there's not a great deal of difference or gap, experience gap between Seraphim and Aeon. They both kind of play in the same way, I feel. Um, but uh, the, uh, the difference is, obviously, of course, the fact he's playing Aeon, we're going to get a nice mix of the uh, major changes in this game. We're going to see what uh, how Aeon play up against UEF as well, which is uh, generally thought of as one of the stronger races at the moment since NG Mod uh, is being implemented. NG Mod's also running in this game as well, by the way. Not sure if that's uh, separate. I guess it actually that must have actually been introduced to balanced testing mod. Now, whether or not that's going to be implemented in 3623, I don't know, but um, it does make sense to balance the game, I guess, towards. Uh, NG mod since it's going to ultimately be in the game and also it's quite a special thing we've got here because it's Blackheart and Luzern who uh, in terms of global ladder rankings I'm not sure about the 1v1 stats but they're at the top of the pile so arguably they are the two finest game players in this game at the moment um, I, last time I checked actually Luzern and Blackheart were both on 2360 but I guess Luzern's lost the game since then he's down to 2359 but anyway on to play by play we've got a flare moving up the left hand side of the map from Luzern 
Where's he going? He's planning to make a little run past here. This group of four mechs is on the left-hand side by Blackheart, who does have an engineer in the area, obviously on expansion detail, but he's got a snoop and a striker there for protection detail, which is uh, always nice to see, actually. It's probably going to look like that flare's going to run past it. I don't know. It's going to be close. It looks like he's going for the rear plateau. There is a lone engineer there, of course, with no units there to guard it. This initial striker out to protect the left-hand flank and hopefully stop anything coming through, but it looks like that may have been missed. Has the snoop picked it up? Yes, it has, so Blackheart is onto it. It's all going to be about timings now, though, whether or not he manages to grab it. There is an engineer for Luzon coming out to get that early reclaim from the central reservation. That's going to give him some nice early mass at the beginning of this game. Flair now making his approach onto the rear plateau. Engineer still looking alone. Blackheart's going to need to think about moving it. In comes the Flair. Snoop coming in from the bottom of the map as well. Flair finding the Engineer. Going to go straight towards it. Blackheart's going to need to micro it. He does indeed. Striker turns up at just the right time. Nice bit of micro there, but not enough to kill the Engineer. 24 hit points left on that one. Blackheart gets away without any major losses there. Scout planes and interceptors out for both guys now. Just getting that early little bit of intel. And those interceptors are going to shoot down both of those scouts without any difficulty whatsoever. AC is now moving to the middle, as you would expect him to do. Four minutes, four minutes into the game on Twin Rivers. It's pretty standard, really. This one here for Luzon is going to go straight for that reclaim. And that was actually Blackheart's reclaim. He pinched there with that engineer. So that is a nice maneuver. And you can see probably the difference already. 1,180 reclaim for Luzon and only 29 for Blackheart. So that's a nice early mass injection. However, that probably will have got wasted. You can see Luzon bottlenecking on power and nearly full barring on mass. So a lot of that will have been thrown away. But if you... Uh, don't get it. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you deny your opponent. But a nice little tactic there from Luzon. Building some wall sections, trying to protect that engineer. But it doesn't get to work. And now it is Striker versus Aurora. Beautiful little bit of micro there as well from Blackheart. Avoiding those Aurora shots. It's going to be close. Oh, uh, Aurora just wins out. But a couple of engineers down at least there. Maybe potentially three or potentially two engineers and a spirit. But nice work there from Blackheart. And you can see that's the difference about the players at this level of the game. It's not just about controlling large armies. Even when it comes down to controlling singular units, their micro is unparalleled. It's lovely to see. Anyway, Luzon up here on the right-hand side with his ACU. Busy building mexes and land factories. Going to make his little home here in exactly the same way it looks like Blackheart is doing up at the top. So not a great deal to give between these two guys. Blackheart's actually ahead on mass. He's expanded more efficiently. I guess that probably comes down to this little striker engagement down here. You can see the odd Aeon wreck kicking about the map. A few engineers went down and that has really hampered Luzon's early expansion. So Blackheart got the better of the early eco. Both guys still struggling on power, but of course Luzon's had that extra mass injection. The question is how much of it was useful and how much got wasted could prove to be critical in the mid game as the game progresses this time we're seeing a, a small engagement on the right hand side of the map a few strikers collecting over here at the edge of the river mechs picked up there by that forward engineer and Luzon just going to wall off this back left section here with an engineer it's stopped on its current duty but I imagine he's probably going to continue that through. It would make sense. Just wants to forget about that left flank. Doesn't want to worry about any run buys. Forward engineer under threat now over on the right hand side as well as that mechs. Nothing in the area to protect it. That will go down as well as the mechs. Blackheart quite far forward with his ACU. And there we can see the extra build queue that's gone down there for Luzon. Completing that wall section and uh, effectively locking down that side of the map from T1 Spam. And it's actually a similar strategy being employed by Blackheart over on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, just using the natural barrier between these two hills to lock that down. Uh, interestingly enough, though, he's just kind of building a slant on this side, not using the natural hillock there on the side as Luzun did. I think that's probably a more efficient way of doing things. But a nice little run by happening on the right hand side. No spirit here for Blackheart. Sorry, Snoop for Blackheart to see those units coming in. So that's going to be surprising. Little attack to him. That wall section won't get finished off. 
and Blackheart realizes the issue is moving his units to intercept and now that wall's actually gonna act in Luzon's favor as those units make a little run by up to the top right successful engineer drop over up here for Blackheart one of the engineers getting picked off though potentially more than that bombers patrolling there for Luzon trying to stop the expansion on the side islands Luzon also has one down here hasn't made his drop yet although it looks like it's incoming he has to make his move now doesn't want to fall behind Blackheart having uh, seen that he's already made the move up to the top mass but two mexes now under threat at the bottom here and uh, Blackheart definitely needs to move a few units to the back of this map to secure the rear flank one of the mexes goes down the other is going to survive on a few HP now it is the rear of Blackheart's base that's under threat and another little push up the left hand side as well there is one snoop here for Blackheart is he going to see it yes he can in fact he's got pretty good intel coverage now there must be a radar up somewhere there it is so that uh, tells him all he needs to know about these units on the left hand side what is in that mix there are a couple of fervors mostly auroras though and finally those units will be beaten down. Rearguard mass safe for the moment. Just that one that went down here on the right and that mass forward mass pump that went knocked down to 130 odd HP. And Luzon is going to assault the wall sections trying to break through. In fact, he's got those fervors in the mix will help him do so. That wall section will go down allowing him an opening to get in here. There is one plasma cannon in place t1pd which will uh, serve to defend this little area except of course the fervors in that mix could cause him some headaches in doing so probably wants to devote a few extra units to security on that side of the map we have got t2 land hq up and running there for blackheart and as well for luzon already a few obsidians out on the field and i'm dying to see how they perform in the game forward come the auroras have we got any t2 in the mix not at the moment losing their commander on an upgrade and blackheart forced to retreat off his forward position as this run by breaks through at the top of the map taking out both of the mass up here at the top of the map a couple of mongoose moving in now for him should be able to counter that without any real difficulty use the range needs to cut out those fervors so uh, his buildings are safe but uh, both guys expanding nicely on the side islands and both equally matched sort of in the air great deal of difference between the two to the T2 power stage there for Blackheart and finally a moderate engagement kicking off on the right hand side of the map Mongoose pursuing this group of T1 units over here on the right Luzon moving forward what was on that upgrade I wonder it wasn't T2 engineering suite it was the enhanced quantum disruptor doubles its range so he's going sniper ACU going to be using that uh, ACU aggressively to see some of these obsidians moving in I really want to see them get in amongst that T1 see how much of an impact that AOE buff has on it if any at all rolling forward now and uh, Blackheart backed up quite far over to the right hand side building TMDs concerned about attack missile sniping Come on, move them in. <laughs> Attack. <laughs> we just want to see them operate in battle. We're not worried about their safety. But look at the range on that ACU. So cool. Blackheart now bringing his own ACU into the fight. Has access to overcharge. Has the T2 engineering suite. No gun upgrades. Now we're seeing asylums and parashields enter the mix for both parties and that's another thing as well the power cost has been diminished for the asylum so it is cheaper in terms of power now to run these shield gens which is uh, another nice buff 
I'm not saying all of these will make it into final mix. Lovely overcharge there, taking out a couple of the engineers, assisting Blackheart on that upgrade, whatever it is he's doing. It's moving incredibly quickly. Probably going to be some kind of gun upgrade to counter Luzon. T2 tech still, obviously. And there we go. It's the amplifier. So Blackheart responding in kind to the threat of the ACU. And a little push on the left-hand side by Blackheart as well. Luzon throwing down some point defense. There's one in the mix already. Those obsidians just standing guard. I think those mongoose are going to be able to break through there. And this is a nice little three-way jostle we've got going on here between these two guys. Small groups of units moving backwards and forwards, just trying to utilize their abilities as best as possible. Blackheart really trying to utilize the range of the mongoose. Lovely volley there, catching four units of build capacity. And those obsidians, while awesome, I imagine, in the mix, are just getting ranged all day. It's a beautiful way to deal with them. Look at the HP fall off that. Some lovely diet pills going down there, working a treat. And Luzon needs to be a little bit careful. Looks like he's backing up here. Lots of build capacity in this mix. Potentially wanting to throw down a few PDs. Looks like that's where we're going. There's one lone obsidian up here for Luzon that's made a breakaway. Not currently taking advantage of anything there, though. Those mongoose are just punishing. Those obsidians can't really seem to get involved here. Blackheart playing this the way he should. With finishing off that point defense, it doesn't have any wall sections to protect it. <laughs> it's really strange, of course. Aeon, generally the race that's all about the range, and Blackheart is outranging him at the moment with mass mongoose. Obviously, uh, Luzon wanting to test these changes on uh, the Obsidian, but Blackheart just not giving him the chance. Lovely volleys there coming in from the mongoose, such a versatile unit. Be a little bit careful though. In come the obsidians. Looks like they missed a volley, but look at that when they get in amongst the mix. They just tear those units apart. They're going to be so brutal when uh, you get them en masse, at least I imagine so. And now we enter a phase, a little bit of a lull in activity. A horde of interceptors out for Blackheart, making a scout around the out outside of. Luzon's core base. Now we've got T3 Land HQ ready for both players. Titans being produced for Blackheart. Harbingers being produced for Luzon. Of course the Harbs can reclaim on the move now, which uh, should be very useful certainly to the top players. And another upgrade as well. Interesting, Luzon's going for a double factory upgrade to T3. Of course that was the same amount it would cost uh, in regular FAF, upgrading two factories to, from T2 to T3. Um, why would you do that? Well, I guess the advantage of that is uh, that it means if one gets taken out, you don't lose access to your T3 tech from other upgraded factories. You look at the Aurora drop, though, over here on the right-hand side from Luzon, coming in from the side island, snatches two mechs, couple of units as well so that's a successful little drop and now a little engagement happening on the left hand side and uh, look how many mongoose are in the mix we've also got titans and percivals up here at the back it's a very effective little counter i like what i'm seeing here and it's kind of reversed as well you expect aeon to have the range advantage at T1 and T3 and then they've got a tanky it get in the mix unit with the obsidians at T2 whereas uh, this kind of strategy shows that obviously T1 and T3 tankiness lies with UEF but you've got the wonderful range of the mongoose which hasn't been altered incidentally that's still the way it always is it's just Blackheart's interpretation of the ideal strategy or tactics in response to Aeon that's why he's going mass mongoose but a nice little breakthrough here. Got a Harbinger and a bunch of Obsidians in the mix. And that is really going to threaten all of these buildings over here on the left-hand side. Lots of T2 mass. This could be trouble for Blackheart, who's slipping down in the eco rankings as it is. One T2 mass point down. Still needs to stay on the move. Little bit of micro there saves that Harbinger, avoiding the volley from the Percival. Not so lucky a second time, but they do manage to claim another T2 mass. 
And now the Mongoose reinforcements have turned up to finish those units off. But that is definitely a nice little engagement there over here on the left. But over here on the right, Luzon's had another upgrade applied to that commander. He's got personal shield. And that is very grisly indeed. So he's got the quantum disruptor. He's got the quantum accelerator and personal shield. So that is a beastly rapid fire sniper ACU we've got there from Luzon and you can see sniper bots coming into play this is meant to be the counter for the T3 assault bots doesn't want to run too close to those triads though loses a couple of them slight bit of mistake there from Intel and micro there from Luzon uncharacteristic And uh, this is always going to play into the hands of certain factions that, uh, when it's map dependent as well. Certain maps are going to favor certain factions when you have the range or the space to use the range of the Aeon at T3. It's going to obviously favor Aeon if it's balanced correctly, but when it's uh, close quarters, you're probably going to be better off with uh, a punchier, tankier faction like UEF. A little drop happening over here at the top. What's on board? that chariot it looks like a single solitary harbinger yes it is and there's no tech at all up here for blackheart immediately he throws down a point defense he's got a lot of build capacity up here that's been on reclaim duty but uh he's gonna struggle to deal with this harbinger which threatens to wipe out everything up here at the top and when you're already behind on mass as he is to the point of 40 odd mass or so be careful but now we've got a real engagement kicking off over on the left hand side so many mongoose still in that mix but now we've got some percivals in there to counteract the harbingers in comes Luzum with his own forces got serenity's in there as well doesn't want to be getting those too close to the action mongoose fire on that t3 mobile rt it goes down with an extra volley coming in there from the percivals Still looking like a small win there on the ground for UEF. Now a push over on the right-hand side. Lots of build capacity over by the river getting caught now by Blackheart. Luzon looking to lose about 12 units of build capacity there. Or thereabouts. Another mechs going down. Another radar going down. More build capacity moving into the mix. And we've got sniper bots that are moving back slowly i think they're meant to ignore t1 as well unless you manually target them with the sniper bots not 100 percent on that and look at the success the black hearts had over here now threatening the very front of luzon's base both of these land hqs in jeopardy few percivals in the mix luzon coming in though with his acu and black heart wants to space these out if he can he's not necessarily be aware that that's the acu we have got some support commanders in the mix but look at the overcharges coming in snagging one of the percivals nice little split there preventing that aoe from taking out multiple units black heart still focusing on the t3 that's emerging from the hqs doesn't want to waste time focusing on the acu he'll never take him down with what he's got and all of those units just got beasted so the firepower from that ACU overcharges working for him all day. And now we've got some spearheads from Blackheart once again wanting to range these range units from Aeon, wanting to keep Luzon at bay. And it's nice you're seeing alternative tactics. It's not just hurt dirt, build Percival's win game. You really have to think about this. That's what you're seeing. Blackheart doing. He is, however, still operating at a mass deficit of around 30 or so. Needs to rectify that. He needs to reassume control of this top island up here. He's two mass points down. This Harbinger hasn't moved from its initial drop-off location. Certainly could conquer all of that, I feel, without too much difficulty. But uh, That's a lot of Harbingers on the field now for Luzon, who's got that horrible horrible acu at his disposal as well support commanders on upgrades interesting let's we'll take a look at what it is luzon is using those for what he's upgrading on those but it's again lovely to see the mix you don't always see that in 
in play, obviously. And you're not, I'm not saying that after the balance patch, or indeed after um, NG mod implementation, you will always see that. Obviously, these players want to test all the facets of stuff and how they work, so they're not necessarily playing 100% the way they would in, say, a ladder match. But uh, still, nevertheless, nice to see. Harbinger has finally moved and it's uh, reclaiming itself now. It's one of the wonderful utility tools that Aeon have. The main T3 bot having that uh, eco boosting ability on top of it. Let's take a look at how these guys have actually done on reclaim. 21,000 there for Luzun and 17,000 for Blackheart. And Blackheart usually, or rarely, I should say, doesn't, rarely gets beaten on the reclaim front. But a little bit of a drop happening from the right-hand side. We've got T3 Tech down here. It's T2. Must have Ed lifted them right over to the corner. And uh, it's a couple of Harbingers that make landfall onto the rear plateau. And forward they go. And there's very little up here at the back to stop them. So, uh, T2 Airtech on the field for Blackheart, which is a pity. He could really do with some gunships right now. And a simultaneous push happening at the left, right, and the back, and at the top. Luzon is going offensive on all sides of the map. And he's going to have real success up here at the back. There's nothing really to stop it. Blackheart air lifting a few Percival's into the mix. Yeah, they should be able to deal with it. But the question is, he's going to lose all those T2 mixes before they can. Definitely going to lose one or two, that's for certain. And these units not wanting to overcommit over on the right-hand side are being brought back by Luzon. Luzon discouraged up here at the top as well from moving on that position. Managed to take about 50% of the HP off that plasma turret. But uh, didn't manage to complete it. And Blackheart wanting to expend too many resources on getting these mexes back. I think that's a mistake. It feels like that's a mistake. Finally, he manages to finish off those harbs as well at the back, but all four of those mexes have gone down. And you look at the disparity now. It's coming up on a 100 mass differential now between these two guys, and that is not sustainable. That is a huge advantage going in Luzon's favor, and he's used it to start a Colossus and that will be a pretty significant game changer right there. Serenity's now getting in the mix, trying to bombard this forward location, but look how many spearheads Blackheart's been pumping out. He's trying to turtle up the midsection of this map and uh, range all of this stuff as best he can with those mobile missile platforms. One of the things that make UEF so versatile is the fact that they are so naturally tanky. And at the same time, because they are a turtle base, they have excellent poke as well. They've got excellent uh, range. Makes them such a good all-round faction. Still Serenity's in the mix on the move down here. And, uh, of course, being able to fire on the move as well, not having to deploy, that's a, a big plus. And uh, these support commanders as well, spamming up some Oblivion turrets. See if I can find the ones that were upgraded. So the Reactant Refractor, and that uh, adds damage, area of effect damage, and longer range to those support commanders. And you can see the little graphic there. Do a huge amount of damage though to those Percivals. They are so very tanky. But now a nice little push happening on the right hand side and Luzon has finished off all of the build capacity up here and is just stealing all that mass. Good for you sir. Well done. Forward come those T3 units from Blackheart taking down an Oblivion turret. And this is looking rather open over here on the right-hand side. That GC is about 60% done. There's a lot more build capacity on it now. Luzon might need to add even more to it. That's a nasty-looking bunch 
of Percy's covered with lots of para shields. Harb's coming in to try and intercept. A few asylums in the mix as well. But look at the awesome power of that. Just chewing through those harbingers. In come the spearheads and in come this mix of T2 with the odd Percival in from behind as well. Bam, bam, thank you ma'am. In they come. One volley nearly takes down a support commander. There it goes. Harbingers getting rinsed. Now Luzun having to bring his ACU in to stand the tide. Buy himself some time for this Colossus to get finished. It's nearly done. Question is, can the Blackheart end it here? But the overcharge is going to be so deadly. All of these units really heavily condensed. Beautiful overcharge there. Takes out three Percivals. Still getting in the mix there with the ACU. It's lovely to see at this stage in the game. Another overcharge out. Takes out another three Percivals. How many kills on this ACU? 50, and it is so tanky. 15,400 HP on the armor, and 29,000, of course, on that personal shield. That's why it is so worth getting. And in come the pillars. Not such a good overcharge there. One going down. Needs to be really careful. Blackheart still stinging at range, but the GC is online just at the point where Luzon could be under some pressure. That is what you call in the nick of frickin' time. And now Blackheart has a real decision to make. He drops in some more Percivals and some Engineers to get some reclaim going on, but doesn't get to do anything because one blast from an incoming support commander takes out all of those Engineers, so no reclaim for you, sir. Just the one Engineer left. Four Percival's very tightly bunched. One overcharge coming in. Bam, takes out the front two. They split just in time. A few Continentals on the field. That was something, I'm not sure if uh, that's happening in this patch or it was suggested. I've seen it somewhere as well. The Continental shield cost is going up, so it'll be more expensive on power to run those. Another GC started over here for Luzon. That's, of course, uh, Continental changes, of course, to uh, try and deal with the issue of people using them effectively as gunships. Of course, you have the ghetto gunship, which is pretty legit because that takes quite a lot of loading and micro to, to manage. But um, with the ASF changes, it was felt that they were quite strong. And these Continentals now loading up a few extra Percivals. And is he loading up the ACU as well? Yes, he is. Blackheart could be about to evacuate. Uh, it's not a bad decision. <laughs> that GC is looking dangerously close, and he's got nothing on the ground to deal with it at all. As it comes in, it's firing its main laser. Out go the Continental transports. A few Percivals, a few pillars, and some T1 units in the mix as well. Uh, a couple of strap bombers out as well, so he has finally made the transition to T3 air tech, but there's lots of ASFs out for Luzun and this could be really bad news for Blackheart. He's got his commander on board. If he loses the Continental, of course, with the commander on board, that's it. That's game over. He's going for a snipe, I think. He's trying to bring everything he can to bear on Luzun's comm. He knows he's lost it. The GC is returning from the front, so Luzun's anticipated the trouble, but in come the ASFs. Oh my god, the Continental down to 900 hit points. <gasps> down to 90 hit points when he finally drops the commander off. That is bloody lucky but he's still got an uphill battle to face Luzon's commander is right there those Percivals need to be reassigned attack orders onto that commander all of the Continentals are now engaging Blackheart's ACU is coming in as well about half the shield or 60% of the shield down there for AC, the ACU of Luzon but GC is coming in and there's no way Blackheart's going to be able to finish off Luzon before that GC finishes off Blackheart. GG. I love the boldness of attack. The shield does go down, but it's not going to matter because Blackheart goes first. What a game. Blackheart says Aeon unbelievably strong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that, that it's particularly OP. We didn't really see the uh, sniper bots countering uh, the Percivals as they're meant to. I don't know whether... It, I mean just didn't build that many of them not really build a few of them here and there but um, 
it wasn't much of a direct counter. Uh, and to be honest, uh, Luzon grabbed the top island and he was ahead on mass for most of the game. And he ended up winning with a close... And it was still a close game. I'm not sure that I feel that Aeon are OP. Uh, Blackheart certainly played a very good game. But yeah, food for thought, uh, as, you, they, as they say, guys. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, guys. And I'm going to try, internet permitting, to get another one at least done today to make up for this colossal gap in programming. Once again, more apologies out for that. Anyway, guys, as always, in the meantime, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.